I really love it when I can solve a problem using memorization. It makes things super simple to understand and even visualize. And this is in fact a very good hint how you can solve this problem. Let us see how you can actually do it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will go over the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. After that, we are going to quickly rule out the brute force approach and then intuitively come up with an approach how you can use memoization and use a DP array. As usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's quickly make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given a M cross N binary matrix. A binary matrix simply means that this matrix consists of only zeros and ones. Given this matrix, you have to find out the largest square that contains only ones and you have to return its area. For example, if you look at this first test case over here, you notice that it has four rows and five columns, correct? So M cross N and it is filled with zeros and ones. Now, there can be so many different squares possible. For example, this is one square, this is one square, this is one square. All of these squares have a side of one, but there can be bigger squares also. This is a square of side two. Similarly, you can have even bigger squares. So you can see that there can be multiple squares possible. Now you have to find out a square that only has ones and you have to tell me its area. So I can find out this is one particular big square. It has only ones and I have one more square over here. This also has ones. There is no other bigger square than this that only has ones. So once you have found out such a square, you have to tell me its area and area is pretty simple, right? You find out the length and you just square it, right? So the area will be four and hence you need to return four as your answer in the first test case. The only important thing to notice over here is that even a single one, that is a square itself. For example, if you look at test case number two, I only have four elements, but I do have these two squares available. And this is the biggest square I can find, which has only ones. So for this particular test case, one will be your answer because you found just one square and its area is also one. So now if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, feel free to try it out on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. Let us start things with the test case that we are already given with. When you think about a brute force approach, how can you attack this problem? The most naive way to approach this problem will be, okay, I start with this particular square, check if all of them are ones. Okay, that's good. This is one square now. Check with another square. Okay, now all of the elements are not one. So this is not a valid entity. Similarly, you can keep on finding bigger squares one at a time. Then you will start off with the next element and then again find out all of the squares that are possible. You will keep on doing this until you have iterated through every possibility ever. While your iterations, you will start from over here and then you will find this as your largest square. So you will keep on iterating, find out the largest square and okay, give the answer. This methods work perfectly and it will give you a correct answer every time. But notice, you will end up finding so many different combinations and every time you will keep on checking, hey, are all my elements one and then keep on updating the value. In fact, this is going to take a time complexity of order of n to the power of five. So immediately we can rule this out. This is not going to work for us. We need to approach this problem very efficiently. Actually, there are a few pointers that can get you started. For example, there are only two possibilities, either a zero or a one. As soon as you see an element zero, it simply means that you cannot have a square that is available over here because you need a square that has all the ones, correct? So I can simply rule out all of these elements, correct? They are not relevant to me. What about the other ones possible? This is where things get interesting. When you look at a single one, it really means that, okay, this can be a square in itself, right? But this is the smallest square. If you're looking to extend your square, what will happen? For example, if you look at this particular one, think like this, in what scenario will it contribute to becoming a bigger square? And that will happen only if the top element is one, if the left element is one, and if the top left element is also one. And this should be true for every subsequent one that you're encountering. Only then it will be a square, right? For example, if you look at this particular one now, 
okay this is a one this is a one and this is a zero so this particular one it cannot be a part of a bigger square and that gives you a very good hint it means that when you are expanding in all the three directions only then you will be able to maximize your square and it will guarantee you that what you are looking for is a square not a rectangle we can now actually get some idea how our memoization array is going to look like first of all try to recollect what does this memoization array or what does a memoization array show up in general a memoization array kind of represents what will be the solution at this particular time and then you use that value to find out all of the future values correct for example if i'm iterating through this memoization array this particular value should tell me the answer when my array is up till this particular point right and then you want to build all of the remaining values as well so that is exactly what we are going to do over here we know for a fact that there can be only two conditions possible either the element will be 1 or the element will be 0 we are pretty sure that if the matrix element is 0 then i cannot form a square over here so this gives me a straight away condition possible as soon as the matrix value is 0 the value at the memoization index should also be 0 so all of these values they can be straight away zero in my memoization array what about the remaining ones now let us start off with the first particular element this is where i'm starting things and if you remember how do you determine if this one is a part of a larger square or not you will want to check all of its neighbors correct so right now i don't have any neighbors to compare with so what i can say is this first row and this first column this will be different because they don't have any neighbors at all so the maximum square they can form will only be one correct and that is of the size one so i can somehow fill up my first row and the first column in my memoization array also and all of these values will be one up till now this memoization array is telling me exactly what i want if i am looking at this particular value what is this telling me it is telling me that for this particular element the maximum square that you can form is only of the size 1 if i'm looking at this particular value then up till here the maximum array that you can form or the maximum square that you can form is of the size 1 there cannot be a bigger square possible now is the time that we start to fill in all of the remaining values and this is where i will actually look at all of my neighbors so now i am considering this particular index and if i am looking at this particular index notice the condition that i have i check if my value is 1 then look at all of the neighbors in my dp array pick the minimum value possible and add a 1 to it what is this actually doing if all of my neighbors are 1 it means i am going to extend my solution correct and this will increase the value so if all of these neighbors had been 1 then i will add a value 2 over here it means that i have found out a bigger square but wait for it currently i will look at all of my neighbors i know that there is one zero over here so this particular one can never be a part of a bigger square so what i do the minimum of all of these values is zero so i do zero plus one and then i can write down a one over here go on to the next value now i again look at all of my neighbors i still see a zero over here so zero plus one and it is a one again i go on to my next index i look at my neighbors i have a zero over here so zero plus one and then i will write down a one again once again is my memoization array accurate yes because at this particular position what is the biggest square that you can find that is only one you cannot find a bigger square now let us try to fill all of these values and things will become crystal clear how about this particular index look at all the neighbors i have a zero so this one also cannot be a part of a bigger square so i will say zero plus one and i can write down a one what about this index look at all the neighbors i still have a zero so this one also cannot be a part of bigger square so i just going to write down one over here what about this one now look at all the neighbors all of them are ones so the minimum value is also one so what do you do you do one plus of one and then you write down a two over here what is this two telling you this two is telling you that for this particular index the maximum square that you can find that is two and you can actually see this is the biggest square available right once again look at this particular index find out the lowest value it is 1 so 1 plus 1 and that is again 2
Looks like my memoization array is accurate. For this position, I have a maximum square of 2. For this position, I have a maximum square of 2. Now, you are just remaining with one value over here, correct? So, once again, look at the minimum value. Minimum is 0. So, 0 plus 1 and you are going to write down a 1 over here. Your memoization array is now complete. You found out all of the maximum squares that are possible. And to find out the final answer, just iterate over all of the values. Find out the biggest value that is possible. This is your maximum side. And to get the area, you just square it. So 2 into 2, 4, and that is your answer. This works perfectly, right? And if you are still feeling confused, think about it. Let us say I change this 0, and this becomes a 1 now. You might be wondering, how does our memoization work? Once again, check for this index. What is the minimum of all of your neighbors? It is still 1. So 1 plus 1, and that will give you a 2. And this actually correlates with the solution that we have. For this particular position, the maximum square that is possible, it is still 2. It still does not count this particular value. Otherwise, the maximum square would have been 3. So let us try to change this also. Since this value changed, I had to clear out all of these values as well. And now, let us try to resume our iteration. For this particular value, what will you do? You will look at all of the neighbors. The neighbor over here minimum is 0. So you do 0 plus 1 and you write down a 1 over here. For this index, find out the minimum. The minimum is 1, so 1 plus 1, and that gives you a 2. Now check it out. For this particular index, look at all these 3 neighbors. The minimum is 2, so you do 2 plus 1, and that will give you a 3 indeed. So once again, our memoization array works as expected. We are able to reuse all of the solutions that we found previously, and we are building upon them. For this particular index, the maximum square of 1s, that will be 1. And every time, we are looking in all the 3 directions and using the minimum value. This ensures that we are moving in a square direction. We are not looking at a rectangle. Based upon this solution, let us quickly do a draw run of the code to see how it works in action. On the left side of your screen, you will have the complete code to implement this solution. And on the right, I have the sample test case that is passed in as an input parameter to the function maximal square. The first thing that we do is, we initialize some variables for all of the rows, the columns, and we also create a DP array. Notice that this dp array will be all initialized with 0 and I also create a variable max side that will keep a track of the maximum value that I have found. Now is the time that you actually start filling up your memoization array. You start your for loop to iterate over the entire array. And notice the conditions that we had. You only had two conditions possible. If it was a 0, we just skip it because all of these elements, they are already 0, correct? Only if the value is 1, you need to do something about it. And even for your first row and the first column, you can simply copy these values because they're not going to have any neighbors. And this will be the maximum square that is possible. After that, it is actually very, very simple. To populate your DP array, all you do is you do 1 plus and then find out the minimum of all of the neighbors in your DP array. For this particular value, look at all the neighbors. Find out the minimum and then add a 1. So this way, you will keep on iterating through every index of your memoization array and also update the value of max side. So until now, the value of max side is 1. You will keep on iterating. Now you find a value 2. So you update the value of your max side and this changes to 2. Similarly, you will keep on going and your iteration will end. At the very last, what do you do? Just simply take this value and square it to get the area. And that is your answer. Because you iterated upon your entire array only once, the time complexity of this solution is order of m cross n. And because you took the space of your memoization array, the space complexity of this solution is also order of m cross n. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. Memoization is a wonderful technique when you have actually proved it that it is going to work. For example, in this scenario, you were able to look at the minimum of all the three neighbors. But that is the case when you are finding the maximal square. What happens if you have to find out the maximal rectangle? Try to think about it and let me know in the comment section below. I would love to discuss all of the different approaches for that particular problem. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This really keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos. Until then, see ya.